When Will and Grace first came on the air back in 1998, many people wondered if a sitcom about a gay guy and the woman who loved him platonically, of course, would really last. But it went on to become a huge success, and tonight the curtain will fall on the show for the final time. So we wanted to take a look back at the last Will, Grace, Karen, and Just Jack. Oh, sorry, Just Jack have given us... <laughs> have given us through the years. <laughs> Roll the tape. <laughs> it's, it's, it is not so easy for a guy to meet another guy in the city. It's a raining man! Everybody dance now! <laughs> you lose, I'll be no way you lose. Oops, I did it again. <laughs> Kiss it, kiss it, spank it. What's going on? What's happening? What's all this about? Wait, what's this? What are you doing? Who's that supposed to be? Me like he and he like me, and the best part is Shazam! You can see free iced coffee every time I go in, which is every hour on the hour, thank you very much, and occasionally on the half hour. But I just went. When's yours? Tonight. Change it. No! Stop it! You stop! Enough is enough! I know, Mommy. She's driving me up the wall. <laughs> am I crying yet? Still no. Now? No. -uh. How about now? No. Stick a pin in my arm. I am. Okay. They lived happily ever after, and that, children, concludes our fairy tale. <laughs> Eric McCormack, Deborah Messing, Megan Mullally, and Sean Hayes. It's so great to see you guys. And on a serious note, I have enjoyed you all so much on this show and so appreciate all your talent and the great writing. I mean, just even yeah. watching that, I mean, how much fun was this show for the four of you and how sad are you to see it end? Well, when people ask us what we'll miss the most, it's that. It's, it's that hanging out together, yeah. laughing, and enjoying each other every day and, and going to a job that we were so fortunate to have that is so easy and, and freeing, you know? Yeah, and what do you think the, the secret to the show's success well, was? Well, you said something about the writing, which yeah. I thank you for saying that, because uh, for some reason our writers never got quite the same, like, award attention as the show in general did, and mm -hmm. I think that's odd, because I think, <clears throat> really, if it ain't on the page, it ain't on the stage. We made it look like we were making it up, but we didn't make it Well, <laughs> in a funny way, I think it's, <clears throat> excuse me, hairball, it's a tribute to you all, <laughs> Because you could carry out, I think, their vision without sounding too highfalutin so well and so effortlessly and do it as if you looked like you were making it up on the spot. And that's what made the show so fun, the combination of those things. Well, there was always a spirit of play that the, the writers cap uh, captured for us. And mm -hmm. Jimmy Burroughs, who directed every single episode, you know, I mean, we had a captain there who, who kept the the comic voice consistent and you know. This has never happened by the way. It's the right. first time ever one director has directed every single episode of a show. So Meanwhile, you know, to have a, a, a show of long standing like this end kind of in a way that's satisfying mm -hmm. to your fan base and to the audience who's been watching you guys all these years is really tough. I mean, we've seen it have mixed results, I think, in past series, right? Because mm -hmm. everybody's like, oh, I like the way it ended. I didn't, whether it's Seinfeld or the Bob Newhart show or even Dallas. So can you give me any hints at all? I know Harry Connick Jr. is coming back. Yes. Um, are you all at least satisfied with the ending? Do you feel good about it? It's, Wouldn't that be great yeah. if you said not really? It's, <laughs> it's actually similar to the last episode of Dallas. <laughs> yeah. so. It was all a dream? Oh, no, that was, yeah, that yeah. was yeah. Dallas yeah. and yeah. Newhart. Oh, yeah. Well, what yeah. was Dallas? Uh, didn't he gunshot? dream about, oh, the gunshot. Mm -hmm. Didn't Bob that Ewing it? have a dream? I don't remember. Right. But anyway. Martin so. Luther King had a dream. It's very confusing. Yeah. <laughs> we, uh... I think we love really it. It's, it's really great. ambitious. It, it dares yeah. to be uh, a bigger thing than most sitcom finales dare to be. And I, I think it's great. I think it's going to be very surprising. Yeah, and I think our fans are really going to be feel gratified by it because it really does tie up child. all the things for us. Meanwhile, you know, again, on a, on a, on a serious note, which is so unusual, especially for Sean and me, because we just laugh whenever right. we talk to each other. <laughs> right. But I, I, I think that, as I said in the introduction, a lot of people thought a show about a gay guy and the girl who loved him platonically, wouldn't fly. And I think you can't really overestimate the impact this has had culturally on the way. For example, my daughter Ellie is 14. 
She loves your show. And I think it's really shaped uh, the way she views people who are different, people well, who are gay. And I think that's a great contribution to society. Well, thanks. You know, I, I always say that this show did for the gay community what I think the Jeffersons did for the African-American community. Nobody had seen an affluent, well-spoken, successful black man like George Jefferson, just like they hadn't seen all those same qualities in Will Truman, you know, on television before. And for every Florence, there was a Jack to mm -hmm. let everybody kind of come in and, and view all the colors of those minorities, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But it's, but it's true. I mean, and certainly we never set out to do it. I mean, we, it was, number one was always laughs. But yeah. in the end, and I think, as you say, it's, it's more with the kids. I mean, certainly we've done some, some good politically or whatever now. But mm -hmm. I think it's in the kids that are, that are watching it now that will grow up and think of it as their Jeffersons that there's going to be some, some change. Well, I think, think you have to teach tolerance at a very early age. And yeah. the more comfortable people feel with people who are different starting when they're young, the more tolerant and accepting they're going to be as they go into adulthood. If I have, I have, if I have kids, about. I'm going to hold back on the tolerance thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah. Teach them any of that. That's yeah. you know, I think I will said that we were not, we never intended to be, you know, uh, activists in any way. Our job is to make people laugh. But the fact that it's had that that social byproduct and it has has you know uh, started a dialogue and it's you know I mean when when I was growing up uh, there were never gay characters on sitcoms and if yeah. they were they were always the source of a joke or something and and now it's they're on every every show yeah even when will and grace started there really weren't gay characters on i don't think really hardly any Not shows really. and now like every single show has yeah. at least one gay i mean you have matt lauer <laughs> <laughs> By the way, all these um, <laughs> actors, from Sharon Stone to a, a really terrifically talented upstart named Katie Couric, have appeared on your show. Catherine Couric. Yes, Catherine yeah. Couric, have appeared on your show through the years. We've actually got a clip of some uh, of the, the different actors who have shown up. Al Roker, uh, remember you guys? Yeah, there, you there I am. And uh, I had so much fun. And a lot of people actually contacted you all and said that there's Matt, who was on recently. They requested a guest shot on the show, which is such a high compliment to all of you guys. Yeah, people would, come up, you know, people would, uh, like you said, call and ask to be on, and and because they had, they knew what a good time we were having, and they kind of wanted to come and play with us, and it was it was a testament to the quality of the show that the creators. And it would shine. I mean, there was almost no one that came on with a name that didn't yeah. that didn't have shine. Right. Even though we worked extremely quickly, we have no rehearsal basically to speak of. <laughs> so yeah. I think I think wait, Matt, did, I think my producer Don Nash just said Matt wanted to say something, say a word with. with uh -oh. <laughs> I, just, I just wanted to say it was supposed to be our little secret. <laughs> Matt, it's the sunglasses, honey. Yeah, yeah the secret's out yeah. there. That's why I put the sunglasses. Can I, can, can I just say what a thrill it's been to watch you guys over the years and how nice you've been to talk to and how gracious you were when I came there and made a mess of things on the set. But I wish you all luck, and you've been fantastic. Congratulations. Well, likewise. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. And, and real quickly, what are you going to be doing now, Deborah? Do you, I'm not, you're in a play off-Broadway. What about you, Deborah? Uh, I'm going to be working working on a film and promoting a couple other ones and hanging out with my son and my oh, husband. Good. And Megan? I have a daytime talk show oh, that's right. premiering good luck on with September that. 18th. Yeah, that's exciting. You. Yeah. And you? I'm going to go over you? to CBS. Yeah. I'm going over to CBS uh, to star on a morning show. Uh, I don't know if you've read about it. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like a sad goodbye to us and you and NBC because we were kind of the glue that held this network together. <laughs> I know, right? I know. Oh, well, you know, all good things. All good. Come yeah. all good it's good. great to see you guys. Good luck. And uh, again, and thanks for all the great years. Thank you. We've enjoyed you all so much.